Trust Once Lost, Chapter 40, More Powerful Spoiled flushed with rage. Insolent little whelp! She yelled. What could you possibly know? My heart beat faster. I wanted to strike her down with my words, but I had to be tactical about it. I know what a bully looks like. I said. I heard what you did to Pipsqueak. I've seen how you treat your daughter. Establish why Pony should listen to me, and keep the accusations vague to force Spoiled onto the defensive, without giving her any details to dispute. <sighs> a blank flank like you understands nothing, she said. You should know your place. Or she could just ignore my accusations entirely and attack my standing. I could leverage that, though. My place is here, I said. I will not be silent while you bully children. Spoiled raised her nose to the point that I wasn't sure she could still see me, given our height difference. Your place is in the gutter they dragged you from. Spoiled scoffed. Obviously your parents didn't want you. You know what? Fuck it. If she was willing to fight dirty, then so was I. Here we have the high and mighty Spoiled Milk picking on orphans in the street. I said loudly. Who among you has a modicum of respect for some pony so craven? Okay, maybe I was laying it on a bit thick, but seriously, she thinks she can get away with bullying an orphan? For having no parents? Some of the ponies whose attention we grabbed with a musical number moved a little closer. Uh, my name is Spoiled Rich. She corrected tersely. The statement was neutral, but her tone betrayed her. Oh, insecure about your name, hmm? I asked. Afraid every pony will realize your only worth as a pony is the money you're married into? Uh, how dare you! Her face was growing redder, even through the excessive makeup she had on. Let's be more direct. You're an arrogant, narcissistic old hag. I continued. You contribute nothing to society, and the only reason any pony puts up with the rancid cesspit you call a personality is your husband's money. You have no idea! Blood pounded in my ears. The next most obvious insecurity I could exploit was her vanity. Oh, that's perfect. And don't think we all don't see how much makeup you're wearing. I interrupted. Beauty was your only marketable quality, wasn't it? And you've aged like milk. Who put you up to this? Spoiled demanded. There's no way you came up with this all on your own. She's afraid ponies are out to get her? Let's double down on that and then bring it back to the original point now that I've taken her down a few pegs. It could be any pony, couldn't it? I asked mockingly. And the saddest part is that you're raising your daughter to be as despised and friendless as you. At the word friendless, I heard a gasp from the crowd. <sighs> Come, Diamond Yara! Spoiled huffed. I won't have you be influenced by this... urchin. No! Diamond cried. I'm not going to end up like you! Spoiled recoiled at her daughter's rebuke, before she raised herself up to her full height. She towered over both of us. I don't know if Spoiled had resorted to physical abuse before, but it was a clear move to intimidate. I reared up and placed both my forehooves on her chest. I had no hope of pushing her back, she weighed at least four times what I did. But there was a clear symbolism to it for the ponies watching, and I was sure that a mare like Spoiled would be very upset at being touched by a common waif. Maybe she would even slap me. Stay back! My voice squeaked. Unhuff me, you filthy peasant! Spoiled yelled. I turned my cheek towards Spoiled, looking over at Diamond who was staring with wide eyes. Spoiled was trying to push me away but my hoof grip was too strong for her to do so without losing hair. Then she grabbed my right fetlock and twisted it, breaking my grip. I screamed. The pain was so intense I could do nothing else. Did she know I had broken it? She tossed me aside, and I landed in a heap. Don't try to fake being hurt, Spoiled said. You'll get no money from me. Tears were streaming from my eyes, but I got back up. It hurt so much, but I focused on the anger. It didn't mask the pain as much as I'd like. I was limping, but I'd managed to stay on my hooves. I wanted to say something badass, like, Thank you, may I have another? I was choking on my own tears, so I couldn't say anything. I tasted blood in my mouth. I must have bitten my tongue. I think it was dawning unspoiled that I might not be faking. 
I spat blood on her hooves. Her look of apprehension swiftly turned to rage. I relaxed my jaw and pulled my tongue back away from my teeth, ready to take the next blow. Don't hurt her! Diamond Tiara pleaded. The strike never came. Instead, I was tackled from the side. In pushing me out of the way, Diamond had taken the blow herself. To my horror, I saw that there was blood running down her face. Her tiara had broken and cut into her as it was knocked from her head, laying bent on the ground beside us. Spoiled Rich had backed up a few paces, making some kind of excuse. Of course, she would care more about appearances than the fact that she injured her own kid. I wished I had some gauze or something to press on Diamond's head to stop the bleeding. Or even a paper towel. But fuck, my leg hurt. It wasn't as bad as when I had broken it initially, maybe a 7 out of 10. Not that I could convince my body to stop crying about it. The crowd murmured, unsure what to do. The bystander effect, I could recognize it. They all knew something had to be done, but none of them wanted to be the first to take responsibility. A pink unicorn with a straw yellow mane was the first to approach us. With her mane down, I didn't recognize her at first. Hi, Green. She said. I'm Soothing Melody. Do you remember me from the hospital? I did. She was the trainee I'd freaked out in front of for no reason. I didn't trust my voice not to just sob, so I nodded. And who's your friend here? Asked Melody in a gentle tone. She gave a death glare towards Spoiled for a moment before looking back to Tiara and I. I'm Diamond Tiara. She answered for me. Does any pony have a first aid kit? Melody switched her tone of voice when she spoke to the crowd. A pony I didn't recognize quickly grabbed a first aid kit from inside their house and passed it to Melody. She opened it with her magic, tearing open a pack of gauze. She pressed the gauze on Diamond's forehead and guided her hoof to it. Keep pressure on this until it stops bleeding. Melody instructed. I almost interrupted her before she corrected her own mistake. I mean, uh, don't take it off to check though. Just, I'll tell you when, okay? Then Melody turned to me. This is the leg you broke, isn't it? Yes. I managed to say. Now, I know you're a tough little filly. Melody said. But I need you to tell me honestly how much it hurts. She gave me a patient expression while she waited for me to collect myself. It hurts a lot. I said. I think something is wrong. Melody's eyes widened slightly in surprise, and her sense of urgency increased. Did you hit your head when you fell? She asked. No. I said. Er, maybe. I, I bit my tongue somehow. All right. Said Melody. I'm taking both of you to the hospital. Ahem. Spoiled cleared her throat. I'm Diamond Tiara's mother, and... Great, said Melody. You should come with us to the hospital. You won't be taking my daughter anywhere. Spoiled ordered. It's barely a scratch. I'm taking her to the hospital, Melody replied. And if you have a problem with that, you can report me to the town guard. Melody turned her back on Spoiled and gave her attention to Diamond Tiara again. Here, let me see. Melody gently removed Diamond's hoof from the gauze she was holding on her head. The gauze stayed, stuck to the coagulated blood beneath it. Melody took out a roll of medical tape from the first aid kit and taped the gauze in place, so it wouldn't get dislodged and tear off the clot. Honestly, with the bleeding stopped, Diamond's injury probably wasn't bad enough to make going to the hospital a necessity, but Melody was doing exactly the right thing by insisting. The hospital would be a safe place to sort all of this out. Can you walk green? She asked. I tried to put weight on my injured leg and winced. I could still hobble on three legs, though. Melody sighed. Uh, would you feel comfortable with me carrying you? Asked Melody, before adding. I won't be able to hold you up in my magic for that long, so you would be laying on my back. I felt tired and battered, and being carried actually sounded wonderful. Yes, please. I said. I trust you. Ooh, that's a misdemeanor or felony! Aw, oh, Spoiled is so screwed now. Anyways, let's get on to our not-screwed donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Sosex, Dodi, Badaswafa, Only One Thing, Zuru, Ryan, and Kalidus. Matt Effect, Chalk, TF, Lucio, Darkside, Raiden, Norris, Black, Minar, Pastel, Skies, Austin, Roland, Star Brother, Mortar, Dominic, Ron, Lyra, Rinse, Scythe, Will, Chris, Winky, Rice, Soul, Shadow, and Luigi, Chancer, Crest, Big Smoke, Bobcat, Murder, Princess, Jet, Little, Mighty, Solar, Symphony, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and love life to the fullest.